There we go. There we go. Well, we're excited about uh, what God is doing here at Mount Zion Second Baptist. I pray uh, that you all are uh, just uh, really ready for the word that we're going to share uh, today. And uh, I, I believe that God's going to uh, share something amazing uh, with us on today. Uh, one thing before we get started, uh, we are blessed as Mount Zion, as a church family to um, uh, be hosting a voter registration drive uh, at our church the entire month of September. And so uh, by next Sunday, we'll be in the first Sunday of uh, September and we are registering people to vote. And we're checking registration as well, uh, checking registration status as well. And so we're ensuring that everybody is uh, ready to vote because democracy is definitely on the line. And I heard a quote saying, uh, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. So you got to make sure you got to make sure that you are voting. Uh, voting uh, your interests, not just individually, but collectively. Think about somebody other than you. How will this affect people other than yourself? How will it affect your children, your your spouse? How will it affect, uh, you know, uh, the young ladies in your family? How will it affect all the people uh, that you are in contact with? We got to make sure that we're voting, uh, not just uh, to look out for our own selfish and ambition or interest, but we're also voting uh, with uh, our community uh, in line, uh, in mind as well. And so uh, I'm looking forward to this election and uh, I'm looking forward for us doing all the research we possibly can on each and every candidate that we are uh, not just, you know, um, nationally, but also locally, uh, because we have some elections going on uh, in, uh, in, in our local politics that we want to make sure uh, that our our voice is heard on those as well. All right. So uh, that's what I want to share with you all. I want to get into uh, this word on today. And uh, I'm excited. I'm excited about this, uh, this particular word. Y'all give me one second. There we go. All right. Uh, first, let's pray. And then we'll get right into it. Dear God, we thank you for this amazing uh, gift uh, that you've given us in the form of another day. God, you have blessed us immensely. And for that, we are eternally grateful. So God, we come to you now asking that you uh, speak to us in a special way, speak to us in a way that we can receive it, uh, speak to us in a way uh, to where our lives and our ways are changed uh, because of it. God, we thank you for this word and we thank you for uh, what will happen as a response to this word. In Jesus' name we do pray, amen and amen. Well, it's good to have everybody on. Some of you have come on since we started. Thank you so very much, uh, but we're getting ready to get into it. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. I believe I got it figured out uh, why it was acting funny on me. Uh, you know, the last couple of weeks, but I think we're, we're uh, squared away. So uh, I'm going to share my screen. All right. All right. There we go. You should be able to see that. I hope you can. I hope you can. Let me know in the comment section if you can see it. Let me know. Let me know. Let me see. There we go. There we go. We can see that. There we go. Good, 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 good. All right. So let's get into it. Let's get into it today. Uh, this is what we're going to talk about. As you can see, a biblical apology, a biblical apology. Wow. I, I know, I know, I know some of y'all like, man, I'm about to log off right now. I do not feel like hearing about what it means uh, to... Uh, know what a biblical apology is. Here is a thing, though, uh, my friends. Here, here is a thing. Here's what I want us to be aware of as um, we are uh, trying to traverse through the murky waters of what an apology is. I, I want to know, I really want to ask you all the question, why is it so hard to apologize? 
Um, why, why is it so hard to apologize? You may not struggle with this word. Some of us may think it's a, a curse word and and you shall not <laughs> uh, you, you shall not participate in 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 cursing. But this ain't a curse word. This, this is a word that all of us need to apprehend. It's the word apology. So I want to know uh, y'all can tell me in the comment section. Why is it so hard? Uh, why why is it so hard to to apologize? Somebody said pride. Oh, that's my mom. My mother said pride. Who else do we got? Somebody share with me. Somebody share with me. Why is it so hard to apologize when in friendships, in in uh, relationships, in family, um, you know, with your spouse? Why is it so hard to apologize? It's an omission of failure. Wow, that's a good one. That's very in insightful. Yeah, that, that it's a struggle when people have to admit that they failed in one way or the other. Um, ego. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a big one. Pride and ego. That, that's a big one. Low emotional intelligence. Wow. Okay, I, I know that's right. Lady Kennedy, she came out firing. Uh, it, it, it's, it's my friends, it, it is all of these things. Um, apologies are hard to say, which means to the offended, sometimes they're hard to come by. Sister Barbara said hurt. Absolutely. Absolutely. In relationships, apologies are important to the mental and emotional health, health of people. So what makes them, I believe that's what makes them so hard to give. If you know they would help the recipient, uh, the recipient of an apology, why are we not quick, quicker in giving them? If you know they would help the recipient, if you know they would be a, um, a value, they would add value to the life and to the emotions and to the uh, mental capacity of the recipient. Why are they so hard to give? Why aren't we quicker to give them when necessary? All right. So I think Psalms 51 gives us insight to a biblical apology, a biblical apology. And I want to share with you, I want to share with you what Psalm 51 says. First, understand the context of Psalm 51. Psalm 51 is written by a well-known man by the name of David. You know David, the one that killed Goliath uh, uh, with, with a rock and a slingshot. Uh, you, you know, David, King David, uh, you know, David, the one that was anointed as a young man, as a as a sheep herder um, to be the next king of uh, to be the king of Israel. The, the, the David, the musician, David, the songwriter, David, the psalm writer. All right. So you you understand who David is. But I want you to know David was a very flawed man, just like you and I. Uh, just like he's a very flawed person, just like you and I. As a matter of fact, David was so flawed, he did something that is, man, crazy. He saw a woman that he wanted to be with that was not his wife. He took her um, and laid with her, and then he got her pregnant. And after getting her pregnant, he... Um, uh, pulled his, her, excuse me, her husband um, from war, brought him back to uh, his wife and was hoping that he could get them to lay with each other. But uh, the man that was uh, the white or the, the husband of uh, Bathsheba, which was the woman that he cheated on with, uh, you know, he, uh, her husband wouldn't lay with her. He was trying to protect the King, King David. And in doing so, uh, King David felt like he was out of options. And in, and after feeling like he was out of options, he sent this man, 
this innocent man to the front line of war and in sending him to the front line of war that was really a death wish in which he was killed in the act of duty. And so in doing so, he thought he got away with it. However, there was a prophet that went to David um, by the name of Nathaniel. Uh, Nathan, uh, by the name of Nathan, and convicted him, right? Convicted him. He gave him a scenario and says, what would you do if this particular situation happened? What? How would you respond? And David responded in a certain way um, that was unforgiving of the man that had done wrong in this fictitious, fictitious scenario. And then Nathan says to David, he says to him, you are the man that you would have acted harshly against. You are the man uh, that you um, just shared that uh, you, you you would you would act harshly and and act begrudgingly against. And so we see he was convicted, right? He was convicted. He thought he got away with it, but this man, a prophet, came up to him and said, no, nah, man, you're, you're the man that you should be ashamed of. You're the man that should be held accountable for your actions. You did something wrong. You, you laid with somebody else's wife and then got her husband killed because you didn't want to face the consequences. And as a response to all of those things happening, here is what David wrote. I'm in Psalm 51. This is the, the lead up to what he wrote in Psalm 51. Here's what he says. He says, have mercy. And this is, it's, it's on your screen. Let me make sure that y'all can see it. Can y'all see this? My head may be in the way. Okay. All right. So y'all can see, uh, and I'm going to scroll up when it's, when it's time. All right. It says, uh, Psalm 51 verse, uh, one, it says, have mercy on me. O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, Blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you and you alone have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner. When my mother conceived me, you desired truth in, in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you may that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Create in me, this is the part that everybody knows, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me a willing spirit, then I will teach my transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God. O God of my salvation, my tongue will sing aloud your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were give, if I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice, uh, the sacrifice acceptable to God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. Oh God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion. In your good in your in your good pleasure, rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings, and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar, 
All right. So um, uh, that, that's Psalm 51. That's Psalm 51. And we'll kind of address it throughout our time together. Um, here, here is what David writes as an apology, right? David writes this as an apology to God. He's literally telling God, hey, God, I messed up. I'm, I, I messed up. I failed. I made a major mistake that I cannot undo. I'm, I'm too far gone. I'm, I'm, and here's the thing, y'all. His power made him lean in to the mistake, to the initial mistake that he already made. Not only did he sleep with somebody else's wife, not only did he get her pregnant, he also got her husband killed all because of his power. That shows me something. That shows me that people with power have to be extremely careful. They got to be extremely careful in how they operate after they make a mistake because you can compound your mistake. If you're a boss, if people answer to you, if you're the leader in your particular family and you make a mistake, it's better for you to share that mistake rather than compounding upon that mistake so that you do not cause further damage with other people. Because watch this, y'all, here it is. The mistake David made did not just affect David. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? It didn't just affect David. It affected other people. So here is the point. Many of our mistakes are not just, um, uh, they're not mono mistakes. They don't just affect you. They don't just affect one person. They affect people in your sphere of influence. They, they affect people in your family. So we need to learn how to be quicker about uh, giving apologies rather than compounding on the mistakes that we've made. I hope I'm helping somebody today. I hope I'm helping somebody today. Um, here is, here is, what a psychologist said, his name is Dr. Tyler G. Uh, Okimato. Oki Oki All right. Here's what he says. Offering an apology can feel like a threat to our sense of self. All right. Offering an apology can feel like a threat to our sense of self. Possibly that's why it's difficult for you and I to apologize when it's warranted, when it's necessary, because offering an apology can feel like a threat to our sense of self. All right. They can feel like a threat to our sense of self. Right. Um, uh, here's what the slide says. I think my head is in the way. Let me see if I can get out the way real fast. There we go. There we go. All right. So admitting wrongdoing, um, the, the, we must acknowledge when you admit wrongdoing, you have to also admit that you're capable of doing wrong. All right. The, the writer, the psychologist, he goes on to say, he goes on to say, he goes on to say, um, he goes on to say apologies feel like the diminishment of self. Because to apologize, you are required to admit that you are capable of doing wrong, thus diminish, diminishing an inflated idea of yourself. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? This is so important. This is so important. When you give an apology, that is re that means that you are required to admit that you are capable of doing wrong, thus diminishing the inflated idea you have of yourself. But here's the kicker, y'all. Here's the kicker. To apologize means that you're not just admitting that you're admitting that you're capable of doing wrong. You're not just admitting that you're capable of doing wrong to the people you who to the people you offended. You're admitting that you're capable of doing wrong to yourself. And that's my friends. That's hard to do. I got to be honest with you. Please don't miss this. That's hard to do when you are committed 
to an image of yourself that is without blemish. Did y'all, oh, that's so good. Did y'all hear what I just said? When you are committed to this idea that you can do no wrong in this particular scenario, with this particular person, with this particular, in this particular relationship, you are incapable of doing wrong. When you have this idea of yourself, that creates an issue of not being able to apologize. Oh my God. I hope, I hope y'all are getting this. I really do. Cause I'm, I'm really talking good. I, I, I really think I am because I, I hope this is freeing you because you have to remind yourself that nobody's perfect. When you have this view of yourself that you cannot make mistake in this particular scenario, you will always go about doing things as if even when you do, do make a mistake, you didn't make a mistake because you can't make a mistake because you're you. Right? Here's a perfect example. Here's a perfect example. In parent-child relationships. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. In parent-child relationships, some of you all are a witness to this. Some of you all had parents where your parents never apologized, no matter how bad they were in that particular scenario. Because they had an inflated view of themselves. They thought they couldn't be wrong, even though they were. Yes, they didn't treat you right. Yes, they didn't talk, you, talk to you the right way. Yes, they did not build your confidence up the way that they should. Yes, they should have been there for you in your time of need or just to be present with you even when you didn't need nothing. Yes, they should have. And they had an inflated view uh, of themselves. I got to tell this story. Um, yesterday at soccer practice, uh, yesterday at soccer practice, um, I, I took two of my children to soccer practice, Sky and Addie, my two youngest. And um, Addie was last in her soccer practice, so she had time to kind of do her homework. So I set her at a table um, and I had her doing her homework while I was trying to, you know, work with Sky on her skills and all that type of stuff uh, before her coach got there. And out of nowhere, these wasps, came up to Addie and was biting her on her leg, bit her four times yesterday. No joke. I'm not even lying. Four times on this, around the same spot, right? Yesterday. And y'all, I hesitated, right? It was hard to talk about because I was really um, down on myself yesterday. Uh, um, I hesitated because I didn't know where the screaming was coming from. When I realized where it was coming from, I ran to her and I was trying to get the, the wasp off and finally got them off. She's crying. I mean, it's just, I mean, it, it's it's crazy. I just pick her up. I tell Sky to come on. I grab all our stuff. And I say, hey, we just going to try soccer next week. We just going to do this all over again. I had to apologize to my to my daughter because I thought like I, I thought that I didn't react quick enough. She asked me, she asked me before I put her to bed uh, last night. She said, Daddy, will you protect me next time? I, boy, that, that almost broke my heart. I ain't even gonna lie to you. That almost broke my heart. That really, really did. And um, because I, I feel like I, I feel like I should have protected her better yesterday, right? All right, so it, I'm, I'm still working through all of this stuff that I'm going, that's going on in my mind. But here is the point. I wasn't, I wasn't so strong and I wasn't, I wasn't so strong-minded or hard-headed that I, that I couldn't apologize. I can't help what wasp do, right? But I still felt like it was necessary for me to apologize. And I explained to her why I was apologizing. Because I don't want to create, I don't want to have this, 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 um, this view of me that her daddy can never apologize to her, even though I'm her authority, even though I'm her dad, I'm her father, I'm her pastor, even though I'm all of these things to her, I cannot operate as if 
I cannot apologize to her. Now, listen, if I can do it, I believe all of us can do it. You need to deflate your image of yourself that you have within yourself and say, you know what? I, I can I can apologize and still believe that I can do better, right? I, I can apologize and, and still be who God has created me to be. All right. I just want y'all to make sure that you keep your self image in check. You, you, you have to keep your self image in check so that it's not inflated to the point to where you don't have the ability to apologize. All right. All right. So here, here is, here is what I want us to, to, to look at. Here's what I want us to see. Here it is. Um, there are elements that David gives that give us the, uh, an effective biblical apology. However, however, um, I did this. I did this research on you know biblical apologies, and a, a person by the name of Tori Durrell gave four elements of, of an effective biblical apology. Apology, and I want to see where David lines up in relation to these four elements, right? I believe he does, but I just want us to, to, to walk through them. So he, he, I believe we can see how David lines up, but not only can we see how David lines up, I want us to look at how we line up in relation to these four elements of an effective biblical apology. All right. So here they are, here they are, here they are, here they are. Remorse and regret. These that's one. All right. Responsibility. Reconciliation and repentance, all right? I don't want y'all to miss that. I don't want y'all to miss that, all right? Remorse and regret, responsibility, reconciliation, and repentance. Those are the four elements of an effective biblical apology, all right? I want us to discuss these because I really want us to, so please make sure that you write these down. I don't, I don't want y'all to miss these. Screenshot it if you got to. Can y'all see? Can y'all see? I want to move out the way. Uh-oh, let me get out the way. There we go. Let me get here. Can y'all see that? There we go. Let me move it up. There y'all go. Screenshot that so y'all get that. Remorse and regret, responsibility, reconciliation, and repentance. All right? Th these are, these are um, uh, the elements of, of an effective, uh, effective biblical apology. All right, so let's go through them. Let's go through them. Let's go through them. Here, here is what we see. Remorse and regret. In, in order to give an effective biblical apology, you need these two aspects, remorse and regret. All right? Please don't miss this. Please don't miss this. You need remorse and regret. This is the starting place for a biblical apology, it's expressing remorse and regret. When our actions hurt people, the injured party needs to know that we are remorseful and that we can identify with their injury that we may have caused. All right. We can encapsulate this principle in three simple words. Y'all ready for these three simple words? Y'all ready for them? Here, here they are. Here they are. All right. Don't miss this. Three simple words. I am sorry. Y'all, these three words, these three words. <laughs> that, 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 that's a Stevie Wonder. Short and simple. Right. All right. So, so these three words have the ability to make a difference in healing someone else's heart, right? They go a long way to heal someone else's injury, all right? So here is what we see as a response, as, as, uh, as, as it pertains to David. Where does he line up in this particular uh, element, right? In, in remorse and regret, all right? Don't miss this. Don't miss it. 
when you look at Psalm 51, he says that he gets to it real quick. He shows remorse and regret real quick. Here's what it says. Verse two uh, and three. Here's what it says. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. My iniquity. That, that, that's showing remorse and regret, right? And cleanse me from my sin, for I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. David was truly sorry for what he had done and he wanted God to know it. He recognized his actions hurt others. His actions uh, br brought issue with others. And watch this, y'all. He sincerely acknowledged that to the Lord. But watch this, y'all. Here it is. He's acknowledging this. I want y'all to see this. Can y'all see it? Y'all can screenshot it. Remorse and regret so y'all don't miss it. There we go. Remorse and regret. He showed this, this element because showing remorse and regret is a necessary component to an apology. Y'all, saying, giving an aloof apology, I believe, and we're gonna, gonna get into it a little later, but giving an aloof apology or a lackadaisical apology or an apology that that is more so trying to, to get out of the situation that you may be in can oftentimes do more damage. You know, you know those type of aloof apologies without showing remorse or regret. Man, I said I was sorry. Dang, can we get on? You know what I mean? <laughs> That's the type of uh, aloof apology because it doesn't it, it doesn't show respect to the person you hurt. If you give an apology without remorse or regret, it lacks respect. It lacks the respect that you should have for the people that you hurt. You have to show this remorse and regret. Here's why. Here's why. Because you don't want to compound the issues that you created. I hope y'all are getting this. I hope I really do. All right. I, I, I really do. Here's what we got to recognize, y'all. Here's what we got to recognize. An apology cannot stand alone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Whatever. Right. That, that, that's there. There has to be something that comes along with it. It must be coupled with true contrition. You got to have a contrite heart. You got to have a heart that says, you know what? I messed up. I'm going to make sure that I do not do that again. It was David's word spoken with humility that God took notice of in Psalm 51 verse 17. Here's what it says. Here's what it says. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit. Ooh, that's so good. A broken and contrite heart, oh God, you will not despise. Which means if you don't have a broken spirit based off of what you've done, keep your apology. Because God don't want it. God wants those that has a broken spirit. If you're hurt by what happened, by the hurt that you may have caused, that's the type of spirit that you can offer up to God and say, God, I'm sorry. And that's the type of spirit that God will, will, will accept. Here's what it says. I've got to read it again because you don't, I don't want y'all to miss it. All right. Verse 17, the sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit. Please don't miss that. A broken and contrite heart, oh God, you will not despise. Right? Which means a flippant, aloof apology only adds to the damage. It is a second insult coupled with the first one that you already did. Don't miss this, y'all. An injured party does not want to be compensated because they've been wronged. They want to be healed because they've been hurt. And the easiest way to do that is by saying these three words. <laughs> I am sorry. I messed up. 
I failed. That was not the right way to go about that. I should not have said that. I, I don't remember how it happened. I don't remember it quite like you like like you uh, heard it, or I don't remember it quite like how you are experiencing it, or you're explaining that you experienced it. But I'm going to be I'm going to be the person that God is developing me into, and I'm going to say, listen, I'm sorry. I didn't mean I, I didn't mean to 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 embarrass you like that. I didn't mean to say that. I didn't mean to do that. That was my fault. I made a mistake. You have to be willing to say, you know what? That's on me. I did that. That was me. That was my fault. So here's here's effective apology techniques is right there on your screen. Be specific. Acknowledge exactly what you did wrong. All right. Number two. No excuses, no excuses. Don't offer excuses, right? Cause that's what we do. That's what we do. We, we offer excuses. When I was pledging, we used to say this quote, just a portion of the quote says, excuses are tools used by the incompetent. Those who use them seldom accomplish anything. All right. And then lastly, don't ask for nothing in return. Don't say, I'm sorry, but here's what I need you to do so that I don't make that mistake again, <laughs> right? That, that, like, y'all, go ahead and throw the, the whole apology out the window. If you're putting stipulations on why you're sorry, if you're saying, listen, unless you do this, I won't hurt you no more. Do y'all understand how crazy that sounds? <laughs> How silly that sounds, how silly we all, because listen, y'all, I'm not trying to point the figure at you. I'm saying we've all done this. Be specific, no excuses. Ask for nothing in return. Your apology doesn't just stand alone. There has to be something coupled with it. And here's the thing you need to have in order, in order for it to, to be coupled with something, you got to have remorse and regret. Right. Uh, all right. So um, here, here is what I want y'all to recognize. It may not be enough to just say, I'm sorry. The offended party is healed by hearing that, you know, specifically what you did. You know exactly what you did. When my children do something wrong, I ask them, and, and I had to get a hold of them some way or, uh, or the other. I asked them, okay, tell me what you did wrong. Remind, remind me, tell me what you did. Let me know you recognize exactly what you did wrong so that we don't have to go through this no more. You have to be specific, all right? If you lost your temper with someone, or said some, uh, 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 something hurtful towards them, your apology needs to recognize this. It would sound something like this. I'm sorry for losing my temper. I'm sorry for losing my temper today. I, I made a mistake. I have to do better. All right? I shouldn't have said things like that. I, I realized my words were hurtful. I was, I, I was out of my mind at that moment. I blacked out. I, I, I need to do better. That's the kind of person we should all attempt to be. Expressing remorse with a contrite spirit is something we all need to learn to do. All right. All right. So um, let's move on. I ain't going to finish. I ain't going to finish. I'm going to try to go through this real quickly. I'm going to try to go through this really quickly. All right. Secondly, secondly, uh, you need to take responsibility. You need to take responsibility. Y'all, here it is. This is the second component of an effective apo biblical apology. It is, encapsul it is encapsulated in saying the three most difficult words known to mankind, I was wrong. These words take us beyond remorse into responsibility. I'm not just sorry. I was wrong. David not only was remorseful for people for what he had done, 
but he also accepted full responsibility for his actions. I'm in verse three of Psalm uh, 51. Here's what it says. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Y'all, that sounds like responsibility, don't it? David, David acknowledged his sin and admitted that he deserved judgment. He deserved to, he deserved God to act harshly with him. All right. This step, this step is vital. The admission of failure holds the potential to bring true change to our hearts. Saying I was wrong takes courage because we are afraid of what the admission of guilt will bring. But leaving outcomes up to God is an important part of growing up in Christ. When you say, I don't know what's going to happen when I take responsibility for what I've done. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I'm going to leave this up to God, knowing that everything that God is doing in and through me is, is, is an important aspect of my maturity and my development. Taking responsibility says, you know what, God, I'm going to take this on the chin and whatever the outcome is, I know you still have my best interest at heart. But here it is, y'all. Here it is. Admitting guilt and taking responsibility requires humility and trust in the Lord and maturity. Because y'all, because here it is, it's a function of integrity. It's a function of integrity. If you can never say that you are wrong, that means your level of integrity is not where it needs to be. If you know you did wrong, and you know you failed, and you know you messed up, and you know you did something that was unbecoming of a child of God. If you don't take responsibility, that tells me your integrity is not where God wants it to be. Because integrity says, I'm wrong, which also implies I'm not where God wants me to be. But here's also what it says. I'm still trying to get there. Y'all, integrity says I'm not where I want to be. But it also says I'm trying to get there. That's what happens when you apologize. You're communicating more than just I'm sorry and I'm wrong. You're saying that you know what? I recognize that I'm not a perfect person, so I'm I'm going to take a step in the right direction by saying I'm sorry, by apologizing, and saying, you know what? I ain't there. I ain't where God wants me to be, but I'm going to get there. I am going to get there. I think all of us can learn from this reality. All of us can learn from this lesson because, y'all, sometimes... Apologies based off of how you, you grew up, based off of the household that you may have lived in, or just may, it may be based off of your own personal um, proclivities. Apologies may be hard to come by, but here's what I want you to recognize. I, and I've said this before, do not refuse to be who you require from other people. If you, if you require other people to take responsibility and to say, I'm sorry, and to fess up when they've done something wrong to you, you have to say, you know what? I cannot require other people to be who I refuse to become. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Y'all, this must have stepped on some toes because y'all not, I feel like I got to, I got to. I got to say more because y'all ain't saying nothing to me in the comment section. Maybe you just, y'all y'all let me know. Maybe you just internalizing all this stuff. All right. Here he is, and I'm going to stop this share. So so here, here is what I want us to remember. Here is what I want us to remember. 
an admission of guilt signifies that you do not have this in, inflated view of yourself, that you have the ability to make mistakes too. And that's the reality that many of us need to accept. Because the Bible says it, it's hard to implement it or it's hard to put this principle to action in our lives in a real tangible way. But here's what the Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Which means you can say I'm wrong and I'm sorry because for all have sinned. You putting too much on yourself. You're putting too much on yourself. So, and to those of you, those of you that are wondering, okay, what do I do? How do I implement this particular word? This is a lesson for those of you that need to apologize and know you need to apologize. See, it, it's hard to apologize when you don't know you need to apologize. So I'm not, you know, I'm letting y'all off the hook. If somebody comes up to you and says, hey, you wrong me, then it's time to activate this particular lesson, these particular principles. However, if you know you are wrong, if you know you made a mistake, and, and, and it may have been something from a long time ago, it's okay to be like, you know what? God's been working with me. Pastor Kennedy had a lesson today that really convicted my heart. So I, I'm trying to get better in this particular area. I'm just trying to get better all the way around. So I just want to let you know, I apologize. Not that type of apology that says, if you were offended, I apologize. No, 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 no. Throw that one. Go ahead, go ahead throw that one out the window. I'm tired. Of, I, I I cannot stand them type of apologies. I cannot stand them type. When people say, "If if if you were hurt by my words, then I then I apologize." No, your words were hurtful by themselves. You ain't got to say if I was offended. No. You need to apologize, and not give yourself a way out as if. Your words weren't hurtful by themselves, but the people that they hurt, they are just sensitive, right? That, that's what that type of thing, that's what that, that type of thing is. Well, you wouldn't be hurt if you wasn't so sick. Y'all, it's time out for all that type of foolishness. It's time out for all that type of foolishness. We need to learn how to be better. And this is a step in that direction. I don't want us to be a church or a body of Christ that can't apologize. That means, you know what that means? Apologies are asking for forgiveness. So you mean to tell me it's hard for you to ask for forgiveness by, from God? You mean to tell me you can't ask for forgiveness? You can't tell God, I'm sorry. You can't say those three words to God? And if you can say those three, God, it, it, how can you... How can you say those three God, three three words to God whom you can't see, and you can't apologize and say those three th three words to the people you can see? I hope y'all are getting this. I hope this is a blessing uh, to you. I pray we're gonna do part two next week. We're gonna do part two, which is perfect, actually. Oh Lord, it is so perfect. Um, uh, cause I got a really, really busy week next week. So I'm excited to be able to hit, uh, uh, go at this again. Uh, so, so I, I pray, I pray this was a blessing. This is a lesson. This is your sign to tell you if you need to apologize, go apologize. I don't care if your child is grown and what you did was years ago. I don't care if it's something that you did with your spouse and it was a long time ago and you don't even want to bring it up. Go ahead and apologize. Or if you need to correct the apology you gave, you gave it begrudgingly, you gave it flippantly. You said, man, you said it just to hurry up and get out of the situation that you were in and you really weren't remorseful like you should have been, go to him. Go to him again. Go to him again. Hey, listen. 
I, I, I need to, I need to apologize. I like that. A lesson in spiritual character building. Yeah, that's that's what that's what we on. That's that's the type of time we on. Because y'all, we we gotta be better. We gotta be better. This is a step in that direction. You gotta learn how to apologize. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I pray this was a blessing to you. Listen, we're getting ready to leave out from this place, never from God's presence. I appreciate each and every one of you. All the ways to give are going to be right there in the comment section. I'm asking that you do that even now. If this word was a blessing to you and you needed to hear this, I want you to do that even now. The Cash App uh, symbol is right, our Cash App uh, handle is right there. The Givelify is right there. I want you to give even now. Thank you so very much. I truly, truly appreciate you. I truly, truly do. Thank you so very much. Uh, I appreciate each and every one of you being a part of What's the Word Wednesday. Those of you that are part of What's the Word Wednesday a little later on YouTube, make sure that you share this with somebody. If you think somebody needs to hear this, go ahead and go ahead and, and, and send it their way. Go ahead and send it. With them. Don't say nothing to them. Don't say nothing about it. Just send it. To, hey, I think, you know, if you know they need to apologize to you, go ahead and send it to them. Go ahead and send it to them. And this is, I, let me say, hopefully they, 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 they get to the whole end. Hey, whoever is watching this, if they sent this to you, you might need to apologize to whoever sent this to you. All right. All right. <laughs> it's okay to say I'm sorry. It's okay to say I was wrong. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. All right. I pray that you all have been blessed by this. Uh, we're getting ready to pray and uh, we're getting ready to close out. Thank you all so very much. Uh, I love y'all so very much. Um, uh, once again, we are uh, having a voter registration drive at church every single Sunday in the month of September. Uh, I look forward to having you uh, having you there registered to vote. Uh, also, you can check your registration to make sure you are registered to vote because you do not know if they purged you or not. So there are going to be people there helping you do that. They're going to uh, be able to uh, give you their phone and you can put in the information, check your registration, and then go on about your business. If you need to get registered, you can do that right there in the fellowship hall of our church at our church, Mount Zion Second Baptist, 137 Boulevard, Northeast Atlanta, Georgia, right there in the heart of this city. I cannot wait to see you all there. All right, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this amazing opportunity once again to come together and be able to grow in your word, to grow in what it is that you have for us. God, we are thankful. We are forever thankful. We are forever grateful that you have shown us the way to an effective biblical apology. Now, God, allow us to become better because of the words that were spoken today. If our hearts are, for, are, are convicted, God, we thank you because that is the Holy Spirit at work in and through our lives in a real way. So, God, we thank you, Lord. We love you. We honor you for what you're doing in and through us. And, God, give us the ability to handle the areas of our lives where we may have went, went without an apology from someone that we needed it from. And give us the ability to continue to pick up the pieces and allow us to depend in and on you. God, we thank you. We love you. We honor you. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen and amen. All right, y'all. Thank y'all so very much for being a part. I love y'all. We'll see y'all. Peace.